Now looky here, if I was to design a webcam for streaming, this would be pretty much exactly spec for spec what I would do. At least on paper, at least. So we're gonna have to see how the experience compares. It's the Elgato Face Cam. Uh, this is a very exciting product. Elgato makes very solid products. People always complain they're a little overpriced, but really, like, their lights are comparable to more professional lights with good color. Uh, their mic's pretty good. Their sound panels, again, I thought it was so overpriced, but it's like when you actually look at what they're doing, they're accomplishing three different sound treatment things. And so I'm guessing it's the same with this. It's a $200 webcam that's not too expensive, but that's kind of on the high end of webcams, especially a 1080p webcam. But that's okay. I prefer my webcam to be 1080p anyway. Reason for that, it's a tiny sensor. So if you try and fit uh, that 8 million pixel count, which is what 4K is, those are tiny ass pixels. And uh, the bigger your pixel, the better it's probably gonna be, especially for low light. And when you stream, you're often in low light. And so in my opinion, for streaming, 1080p is better. It's going on Twitch, it can only be 1080p anyway. Usually your little window is so small anyway. For video conferencing, 1080p is plenty. Uh, and the compression's insane. So uh, let's see what's in the box. We got this box inside a box. We got some cables. It's a long USB-A to, to Type-C. I actually tried out this webcam yesterday. It seemed to only work with this cable. I tried other USB-C cables because I was having issues. Would only register with this one. So that's an interesting thing we're gonna have to play around with a little bit more. So the last thing in the box is an instruction manual. Maybe I do need this because I was having trouble with it yesterday. It's nice, it comes with, well, well, we'll get to that. Little instruction guides, quick start. It's pretty easy though, plug it in, use the app you wanna use. It's not one of those cameras you can use in two apps at once, which is normal, uh, although that would be nice, especially for streaming devices. I want cameras and capture cards that can be able to be read in two apps at once. That's a big selling feature for me. The amount of times you need to record or uh, in a different app than you're streaming, that's big. That's big, Elgato, you should know. You should know. Ava Media provides it. All right, now to the prime time, baby. Little baggie to protect it. Um, here's the camera. The, it comes with the privacy cover. I seem to have left it at home. Uh, it just goes on top. It's uh, plastic, brown, like a lens cap. But it's, uh, it's nice, so you don't have to worry about it turning on and watching it without you knowing. Uh, especially with that uh, big Russian farm of hackers that just display webcams and security cams uh, on their websites 24 seven that you can just go watch. It's pretty scary. As you can see, it's actually a little bit bigger than you I would expect most webcams to be. It's got more depth uh, and that's a, a good sign. Uh, so this is the Anchor one, fairly similar sex. Sex, yep. Specs, it does 1080p 60 as well. It can also do lower resolutions, uh, lower frame rates, 1080p 30 might be better for you, especially if it's a, a low light situation but uh, on Twitch usually it's 60. As you can see, this camera is just deeper than what a typical webcam looks like. That's a good thing. We're gonna talk a little bit about more why it's so deep later. Uh, but in terms of the rest of the body, it's pretty standard. It's got a monitor mount, which is fine, but it also has a quarter 20 screw, which is really nice. So you could actually put it into a tripod or into a different, many, many, many camera accessories. So depending on your situation, this is actually Awesome, you could put a, like a quick release plate and snap it into a tripod. This is, that's a great thing. I find it very frustrating <laughs> when you're trying to use a webcam in certain situations, so that's a big plus. It's padded so you don't have to worry about scratching your monitor, which is very good. So the big selling features of this lens are that it's pared down some of the features that are kind of unnecessary on a webcam. So most webcams have a little mic. Uh, if you're using it primarily for video conferencing, that's nice to have, uh, especially if you're, the computer you're using doesn't have a mic. But for a few reasons, the mic on a webcam generally sucks. Not only is it like a tiny little mic, sometimes there's like a dual array, but it's so far away from the speaker that the sound quality is never gonna be good. And so what they've done to cut costs is just forego the mic. And for streamers, I think that makes a lot of sense. One of the first things you should buy as a streamer is a decent mic because your audio is very important. It's a lot easier to connect with someone if their mics are good. And so I think that's a smart choice. It's a smart compromise to make. In terms of what's actually in here, it's the same sensor that's in the Dell UltraSarp webcam that we unboxed or Alex unboxed a couple weeks ago. So it's a good Sony sensor. They advertise a bigger size than, they, than it is, or at least the, the Dell one did. And so it should be good in low light. Sony's, I mean, at the top of the sensor game these days, so that's great. But what I think is great 
is that it's a uh, 24 millimeter equivalent f2.4 lens, which is pretty ideal for streaming. If I was to buy a prime lens for a camera, I would buy like a 24 or 28 lens and have it a bit further away from myself. I've streamed with a 20 millimeter lens and it's it's been uh, it's a little bit wide. It kind of distorts your face a bit. So I think 24 equivalent is kind of the sweet spot. So I'm excited to see how this looks uh, and how this performs. After we talk about our sponsor, I fix it. Thank you to iFixit for sponsoring today's video. Level up your workbench with iFixit's line of Marlin screwdrivers. Each screwdriver has an ergonomic rubberized handle with a swivel top and a black oxide coated tip. It holds tiny screws with a steel grip. The lid is magnetically attached and doubles as a sorting tray and stand. Very convenient. It's got a lifetime warranty, so if you break it, they'll replace it. Grab yourself a set today at the link in the description below. So I'm very excited to use this thing. I actually got rid of my, my cine camera that I was using for streaming and I've been kind of looking for a cheap alternative for a while. And so I'm excited to see if this can do what I want it to do. It's got eight elements in the lens and each element has a double layer of reflective coating so there shouldn't be issues with weird glare or uh, lens flaring, which I think is really good, especially in a studio environment where there's bright lights in every weird direction. We've had webcams where there's just unusable lens flare and it kind of just sucks. And so let's see what it looks like. My impressions right off the bat is that it's having a little bit of trouble with the white balance. It's not, I'm not really giving it a fair shot just because it's facing a blue wall. So let's give it a bit more of a neutral background and see if that does a little bit better. It's still really contrasty. It's really red. And that's actually what I noticed yesterday is that it, the skin tones are kind of a little bit off and over warm. So let's see if I can change it a little bit. So I think I'd want like a slightly cooler tone. So it's nice you, you can be able to do this. There's the Elgato Camera Hub software where you can actually do more fine tuning, but uh, as of the time of the shooting this video, it's not out. So I'd be very excited to see exactly what kind of fine controls, because I think I could fix uh, the color issues a little bit more and make it look uh, pretty good. Because the overall look is very good. It's very clear. It looks like a webcam, but sharper and uh, a little cleaner. Just kidding, we have the software now through a uh, communication breakdown with he who shall not be fired. Uh, we have we have found it, we, we got it. I'm excited about that because this is, could be, I think what is the biggest selling feature of this camera is the ability to uh, control all the settings and get the image exactly how you want it. Uh, auto can be okay. Um, but generally it struggles, especially if you want like something specific. If you want your background to be very dark and you to be kind of more poppy in the front, it can struggle to be like, okay, which exposure am I going for? And you want to be able to just set it big. No, set for my skin and then the background is supposed to be black. And so why don't we just go through the settings and see how it is. I've defaulted everything to the automatic. The first thing is just, you got your input. It's great. You can actually save your settings right to the camera. So at the end of this, I'm just going to hit this save button and it's going to save right into this camera. And then you can move, move it between devices and it'll keep the settings. That being said, if you're moving it between devices, you're probably changing it like, to different lighting setups anyway. And so you'll probably want to have the Elgato software on there anyway. It's useful though. The first one is the zoom, which is very fun to play with. That's my mouth. It's a digital zoom, so I wouldn't recommend doing this. Yeah, I would generally just leave it so you're getting the full amount of the sensor and the full lens. It's gonna be the best image. That being said, maybe there's a use case where you really need it zoomed in. That's fine. You do you, you, do you boo. And in terms of picture, there's the contrast, saturation, and sharpness. Generally, I think that webcams are a little too contrasty. I kind of prefer a more flat look. I think it's this is probably a little bit too flat, 0%, so I'm gonna go somewhere 20%. I think that looks a little bit better. It's not too oversaturated, I mean like, that's oversaturated. Oh yeah, I like it. And then we got our sharpness. Oh yeah, you can just see how blurry it gets. It looks very almost like a dream lens at the bottom end. And then at the top end, it's definitely over sharp. I think I prefer it a little softer. Exposure, I'm gonna take it off automatic. I. So exposure is something that I think is one of the more important settings about uh, a camera. What generally a camera just kind of takes the whole picture and is like, okay, we want it to average out to this amount. It takes like the highs, the lows, and kind of just figures out something in between. That's not always great because maybe you do want a lot of bright or a lot of dark. Uh, and if if it's doing that, it can just struggle to kind of find what you want. And generally what it'll do is it'll just change the shutter speed. Uh, and so if it's really bright, it'll go to a more closed shutter angle, uh, but then you'll it'll like be really like jittery and and kind of gross. It'll look like kind of Saving Private Ryan, the 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 beach scenes when it's like you can tell it's 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 too clear. But then the, the opposite, if it has too much light, it's gonna have to open the shutter, and then it's just really smeary and crappy. And I can actually just show you guys this. If you go into high shutter speeds, 
you can see like the movements like kind of over clear and it just looks really jittery. It's not great. It's not as bad as like a real, if you're doing this on a cine camera. And then if you go the other way where it's really smeary, I mean, it's obviously overexposed as well, but that's kind of generally is the shutter speed is how a webcam will compensate for exposure. That's not what you want. You generally want to have your shutter speed be your frame rate uh, times two, like dividing one. So it's like, if you're shooting at 30, uh, you want it to be 1 60th of a second is your shutter speed. That's just, it most closely approximate how film was shot back in the day where the shutter was half, half of the frame was a closed shutter. And so that's generally the rule with cine cameras and it's nice on this camera, you're able to set it. So we're shooting at 60, so we're gonna set our shutter speed at 125, which is the closest to 120. And that should look pretty good. And it does, I think that looks, that looks good. And then you can muck around with your ISO. Because it's pretty bright in here, uh, 164 is fine with 100. If it was a little dimmer, I, you'd probably have to crank it a little bit and get it to be noisier. You can see the blues right there. It's noisy AF, dog. You got your white balance, you can turn it off. I think it's overcompensating a little bit, like it's going too warm. And I think there, the, the camera is having a little bit of trouble with white balance in terms of like my skin tone. It's just like, it's moving it all into something kind of a little bit unpleasant. It's not terrible. It's not the worst webcam color I've seen, but I can, I mean, that's something that you pay for in really high end cine cameras is really nice skin tone that just looks natural. Uh, and it's very separate from all the other colors in a frame. This is like, my skin tone looks very similar to like, like something in between that wood and that. Like it's just, it's all kind of, a color. <laughs> so I'm gonna play around with the white balance a little bit. I think this is a bit of a bummer. You can go from like cold to warm temperatures, which is great, but there's no tint setting. And that's when you buy, especially when you buy cheap lights, usually it's like there's too much green uh, or sometimes there gonna be too much magenta. And that's actually, I think, a, almost as necessary control as your cool to warm uh, in terms of compensation. So it's kind of a bummer that they offer this much control, but there's no tint. But that being said, uh, having a white balance is nice. And the last option is the noise reduction. Uh, it's not a particularly noisy camera. I've seen way noisier. I'm sure if we used pretty much any built-in webcam, it would be a lot noisier. This is pretty clean, but you can turn it on. Generally, this noise reduction doesn't look like it's a super advanced uh, advanced one in the sense that like, it just looks like a kind of a bit of a smear across the whole thing. Like you can see my skin, I mean my pores. Getting old, boys. Getting old, people. Uh, it just like, is softened a little bit. Same with the noise, like the background, This the wall. Uh, if you look at it, this is with noise reduction on there. <laughs> uh, you can see it's like kind of smeary and then I turn noise reduction off and it's like a little bit sharper. So it's just, it's one of those noise reduction filters that just blurs everything a little bit. It's fine. I probably would keep it off just cause it's not that noisy anyway. And I want a little bit of extra clarity without the, the digital sharpening. And then you got an anti flicker, although there's not really any issues in the back, but it's nice, a nice option to have. And so I can save it. There it is. That's pretty easy and honestly, the having this amount of control, uh, while maybe it's not f as fully featured as a cine camera, it's good and it's a huge deal, especially if you wanna learn how to manage a camera. This is a $200 camera, that's pretty cheap compared to a mirrorless, uh, even a point and shoot is pretty expensive. And so for this, it gives you a little bit of ability to try some settings out. It's not it's not gonna be like your 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 end game camera, but uh, this this control is very exciting for a webcam. I was hoping for a little bit um, of a more noticeable jump in clarity, especially because they advertise that it's a 422 uncompressed video going to the computer, whereas most cameras are, are compressing the video, which adds processing time, so there's theoretically less lag, and it's supposed to be higher quality video. It's, that's a huge deal, especially if you're a streamer using a green screen. Having the extra color information allows it to be a cleaner key. And so that's a huge deal if that's the kind of streaming you wanna do. In terms of color, it's hard. This isn't the ideal webcam setup. I find generally flatter lighting is more giving a webcam a better shot because you're kind of seeing the edge of the set as well as like a bunch of different lights. It's just probably gonna struggle a little bit. I think again, I could probably fix it a little bit if I had more manual controls, but unfortunately today I cannot. But this is this is not a bad webcam. Like I said, I took it home yesterday. I was having crazy connectivity issues. And so your, your mileage may vary. We aren't having those issues today, but basically, uh, while I was streaming every like 30 seconds, every 20 seconds. I mean, I'll just give the editor a clip. He can make like a five second super cut of my, my frustration. Technical difficulties on the first second. Again? Oh, this one sucks. For tonight, I chose the wrong, no. <laughs> Are you <laughs> oh, You son of a <laughs> Yeah, there's not, this room's not that exciting.
I mean, I'll show you guys the view. The view's the view's pretty cool. Oh my god, I froze. Yeah. No, nothing. It's not even showing up anymore. But this this isn't bad. It's totally usable. Again, webcams are in a weird spot where they kind of have to cap out at $200. And I mean, $200 isn't cheap. It's expensive for a webcam, but when you compare it to a mirrorless or a cine camera or something else, it's a, it's a it's cheap alternative. But if you were to make this more expensive, you would have to just sell it as a camera. I mean, once you're into $500 range, you're just buying a point and shoot at that point. Or you could buy like an A5000, like, uh, or like that series of camera and really do a lot better. And so what I'm finding is, yeah, skin tone's a little bit off. It's having a little bit of trouble. The autofocus seems to be pretty good. Although for F2.4, I'm finding that the bokeh is not particularly attractive. The field of view is pretty good. It's 82 degree field of view, which is pretty nice. So you could actually get in pretty close and the autofocus is tracking me pretty good. Uh, the optimized distance is 12 inches to 47 inches, which is pretty close to where you would be when you were streaming or like video conferencing. But let's compare it to what's built into this laptop. This is what this camera looks like. You can see the has a lot of trouble with the highlights. It's uh, really struggling with my skin tone. It's trying to bring up the blacks too much. And so it's just weird colors, weird, uh, like my face is just a like yellow red blob. It's not very attractive. It's very grainy. It's not very clear. Would not recommend using this at all. So yeah, overall, this is a pretty good option. I mean, in my head, every time I look at a new fancy webcam, I hope that it's gonna be like competitive with a much more expensive camera and that's kind of an unrealistic expectation. But this is pretty good. The question remains, is it worth 200 of your hard earned dollars? Maybe. I say that the Razer Keo Pro is probably a better box option out of the box. Uh, however, this one with the fine tuning, you could kind of get it to a better spot. I think the uncompressed video, if you're someone that wants to use a green screen, that's a huge deal. That's a lot better, like a lot better, trust me. And so this is a pretty good option on the market. It's definitely worth checking out, just like it's worth checking out our other short circuit videos. There's a whole arrangement. There's beautiful videos for all of you. I present to you a sandwich of videos. Thank you for watching. Why don't you like, subscribe, comment if you want this or you don't, or what webcam you're currently using. Why not? Bye.